So I'm going to show you how to join the back of a bug hood. I've made quite a few of these now, so I picked up some kind of tips and tricks that I can pass on to you to make the neatest possible seam. Um, so to start with, we need a five millimeter crochet hook and you need one strand of yarn. Um, to make the bug hood, you use two strands of yarn held together, but for this seam, we're just gonna use one um, and that's our own weight yarn. So first I'm gonna show you how the edges look which they don't look very even and that's how it's knit it's it's not a very even edge and that's what makes it quite difficult to join and I think that's what a lot of people have been struggling with um so I'm just going to take you step by step how I would do it so we're going to go to the middle point so this is where your sides split and we're just going to look at these stitches so the first point I'm going to put my crochet hook through and this just creates the neatest possible bottom is this loop here so you can follow these two middle stitches up and we're going to go through this one here and the adjoining one here so they're the inside loops and we're just going to for the first stitch I'm just going to pull my yarn through so wrap the yarn end, leave a lot yarn end about 15 centimetres and then pull it over the crochet hook like this and then we're just going to pull that through both loops and that's the very first kind of joining of it. Now the reason I do the inside first, I think that's actually different to the pattern but this is just the way I found easier is it just creates kind of this flat join just before you start. Um, so I'm now going to show you how to use the method that I've been doing in the pattern, which is you're going through the outside loops. So I'll just show you this is an outside loop. And so the adjoining one, this is the outside loop. Now, I know it's quite complicated because technically the other one could be the outside loop, etc. But this is just how I've named them. So we'll stick to this terminology. Um, so if you follow your work up, you can see all the way up your work, you can see you've got this kind of stitch running up and you've got the inside here and the outside here. And from now on, we're only going to be working through the outside loops and that's going all the way up. Even when things get a bit messy, we're still going to be working through this outside loop instead of this one so i hope that's clear so we're going through this one so i'll just put my stitch back on my hook and we're going to keep the yarn on the left hand side of the work like this so we're going to go through the first outside loop on this side and then go to the adjoining side and you can see this is the outside loop here this is what we're calling the inner and this is what we'll call the outer. So I'm just going to put my crochet hook through there. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to wrap the yarn around the hook like this. Do that again, like that. And we're just going to pull that through both of these loops like this. And that is your very first crochet slip stitch join. So that is essentially the method we're going to use the whole way through. So again, we're going to go through outside loop, adjoining outside loop, which is this one, wrap the yarn and pull it through on the hook. And the key to this is just to keep pulling the yarn really tight. And if you're pulling the yarn all the way through, it should create a really neat seam. So again, we're going to go through outside and you can kind of see as you start joining that I've gone through this one so you can follow this all the way up and see the ones you're joining quite easily so you're always joining this same outside one and we're just going to make sure that's pulled really tight and then we're going to keep going and always going through this one and always going through this one.
and this first bit is the easiest bit because it's relatively straight so there's not that much to battle with you're just following the same line up and completing the stitches like so if you find it's getting a bit there's a bit out that's a bit unneat or something you can kind of pull the stitches like that and it evens everything out a little bit which is also really good um so you can see what i've joined so far and how it looks quite neat which is good so we're going to keep going just keep joining the loops i must admit when i first did this seam it looked awful <laughs> it took a really long time to kind of perfect it um, so I'm hoping by showing you on video you guys will be able to make it perfect the first time so no matter what the stitch looks like you're always going through the outside loop and just keep pulling keep make sure this yarn on your left is quite tight like this right sometimes you get to these points where you kind of have like this kind of scenario so it looks like there's a gap or doesn't quite look right but whatever it looks like you're always going to go through this and always going through this one so no matter if it looks a little bit different or you've got a bit of gap you're always going through every single loop on the row so at the moment this bit I'm joining is all the decreases so that's why the edges are not the neatest um, but it is actually the easiest part to join I'd say and then the next one just keep it pulling it tight see like that and then one more and then you can see that we're just reaching the point of the cast off. So I'm just gonna show you what we're looking at now. So the way it's worked out, you can see now I've joined, this bit is all the decreases. And then this is where we started to cast off stitches. So that's where you get more of these kind of stepped edging. So you can see here is the point we cast off two stitches and the same on the other side and then it goes to four and then it goes to ten. So it looks a little bit messier on this part but effectively you're doing exactly the same thing. So what I do is I kind of find the cast off stitches so I can tell that this one and this one are the two stitches that I've cast off and the same on that side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just continue and go through the next loops. And it's literally worked exactly the same as the others. Um, but you can see here, yeah, these are your two cast off stitches. So I'm just gonna join them together, just as you've done before through the outside loops like that. I'm just going to pull them a bit to make it a bit neater and then you can see here you've got these ones here so you've got two more stitches here so I'm going to go through this one and this one pull it through and then you just continue so you don't use the cast off stitches any differently to how you would normally you're just continuing to go through each loop on the hook on the hook on the work obviously <laughs> talking rubbish now so i'm literally just going through every single loop now at this point so i'm just gonna 
show you and kind of neaten everything off, just pulling it kind of taut to give it a bit more evenness along the seam like this. So now we've reached the point where we've got the last cast off edge and I've not woven these tails in. This is like the very final stitches here and I've not woven them in on purpose because I find it you can make it look a bit neater through the inside but I'll show you that later. Um, so what I'm going to do is this is the only stitch I ignore because it's not actually a proper stitch. So when you reach this point don't go through these two because it's not really a proper stitch and I found that if I do join these two long stitches before the yarn ends um, it creates a bit of a hole which it doesn't look bad but as I say this is just like the very neatest way you can do it so instead I'm gonna go through this first stitch on the cast on and it's the outside loop it's a bit tricky because it's the cast on edge so you're going through the actual one here it's outside loop and I'm just gonna pull it through all of them which can be quite tricky like that and pull it tight and then I'm just going to keep going and the cast off edges are actually really nice to join because you can see quite clearly that this is the outside loop and this is the inside loop so it's really easy to join so I'm just going to finish joining that keeping pulling the yarn quite tight And this is often the neatest part of the seam and the seam part you see mostly so it's good to do it super tight keep pulling this left yarn tight like this and then when you reach the last stitch what you can do is just get your scissors cut the yarn leaving a bit of a yarn tail about 15 centimeters and then you can just pull on this loop on your hook until it pops out like so and as you can see we've created this really neat seam and when you pull it this way you can see it's taking a really nice curve and you've not got any of those wobbly bits anymore um i'll just show you on the inside um, when I sew these two ends in sometimes I find that I get a bit of like unevenness here and it looks a bit messy at one point and where these ends are it's really easy to kind of get rid of that and you can see on the inside you've got these two kind of holes that appear and that's just through kind of the way the stitches are worked and the cast off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread these yarn ends with my needle, just like you would to weave it in. And I'm just gonna take my needle around the hole. So around, you can see the holes here, here and here, pull it through. And you can see that's just closed the hole and then to weave it in i'm just going to weave weave these through here because it's quite a nice little bulky section that your yarn tail can kind of disappear so i'm just gonna cut that um, and then do the exact same on the other side So 
you can see here, this is the hole you've got. Sorry, went to camera. So you've got this is the hole that you're looking at, and to kind of cover it up, we're just going to take our yarn tail around the hole. So take it around the stitches, around the hole, just to close it up. And then do the same thing and just weave them back down the seam. So that wasn't a very neat one. And then you can just chop that. And the great thing about this seam as well is it creates such a flat kind of surface inside. Um, so that's going to be against your head, which actually is perfect for this hood because it's quite close contact. So I'm just going to show you how the seam looks now, especially like when you put your hand through it and make it more 3D. Um, so it looks pretty neat now, it looks really good and um, we're ready to pick up the rib to finish the bug. Um, as you can see it makes a nice smooth curve and yeah it's just ready for the ribbing. Um, I hope that's been useful, sorry if I've just blabbered on about that for like 15 minutes, which I probably have, um, but yeah, I hope that helps you guys join the seam, um, and yeah, tag us in your bug hoods, as always, thank you, bye!